In this presentation, we are going to look at uh, the Fibonacci sequence as part of our programming exercises. So the Fibonacci numbers are computed according to the following relation. F of n is equal to F of n minus 1 plus F of n minus 2. So the nth uh, Fibonacci number is the sum of the two Fibonacci numbers that precede it in the sequence. And the initial conditions are 1, uh, F of 1 equal 1, and F of 2 equal 1. So the first two numbers are 1 and 1. And that's a sort of a quick look at the sequence there. That's the first six Fibonacci numbers there. There's a couple of ways you could specify it. Some people uh, specify with 0, 1, and 1, rather than 1, 1, 2. But we'll, uh, this, this, this will uh, do, do us for the time being. So write a function that returns the first n Fibonacci numbers. Okay. So let's go to Julia here for a second. And what we are going to do is write a function now. I've put it, so the general syntax is function, then the name of the function, and then input values here. So this is uh, that line there. And But uh, I'm going to sort of prototype it a bit. I have the function written there up at the top. So what we're going to do is, first off, initialize it. And we have going to set up an array of 10 values. Now, we don't know the name or what's in the value, so we're going to put an initial uh, input of 0. Okay. So n is equal to 10. I'll just put 10 there for a second to give you a quick look. So we're going to um, sort of assume for the time being that the chosen number is 10. The function will fix that if you put, uh, specify a different value. And we are initially going to put in zeros in, uh, in, each, play, in each element. Now, but we know that the first two values, the initial values, are f of 1 is 1 and f of 2 is 1. So what we're going to do is run that there as well. Little green button there in the top. So what we uh, what we have now is f of 1 equal to 1 and f of 2 equal to 1. And let's clear the screen there. And what has happened there now is that the uh, Two initial, the, the first two values have got changed to one, so that's what that part there does. Okay, now, so we're going to set up a for loop for this, for i is equal to one from three to n. So we have the first two values already initialized, so we just have, we actually start in the third one, all the way up to n. So for i equals three to n, that's what, uh, so we, we have, we're going to start here, the third one, and then go all the way there, right down to the end. Okay, and so let's go there. So again, this is how we would implement it there. Uh, we're dealing with i in this case. For i, uh, the i is our index variable. f of i, or the ith uh, element of f, is the sum of the two um, numbers that precede it. f of i minus 1 and f of i minus 2. Okay. And we're going to end the for loop. Okay, then we'll print out f. And then we write, uh, we just put in our end statement. So that's that's the for, that's the end statement for the for loop. That's the end statement for the function statement. So let's run it all there. Let's go, let's uh, put, let's actually put, see that all together. So function Fibonacci n equal 10. 10 there is a default value. If you don't specify it, it'll just come out as 10. It'll just uh, uh, return the first 10 values if you don't specify anything. Again, initialize it. Uh, f equals 0 is n. Just uh, uh, create f. And then initialize it with some initial values. Then run a for loop. So let's run all that. There we go. Fibonacci, that looks good down there. Okay. So Fibonacci... Let's print out the first 15. There we go. We'll just pop that up there. So that's the first Fibonacci, uh, 15 element array of Fibonacci numbers. Now, the fact that they're uh, returned as floats is not something I'm going to worry about right now. Yeah, we have the first Fibonacci, uh, first uh, 15 Fibonacci numbers. They get quite large quite quickly. Let's just run it without an input. There we have the first 10. Okay, that ends our presentation. Uh, actually, just as a quick remark, actually, now that I think of it, there's a couple of other ways we might approach this. And so this is the uh, 
output again. That's what I've used there. But we can also initialize the array f. Rather than using zeros, we put in one and one straight away. And then what we would do is append values as we go. So this is a slightly different approach. Actually, I'll just walk through it very quickly. So f of 1 and 1. Let's go back here to Julia. So it's just that there's, there's many different approaches you can take here. Um, there's more than one way to scale a cat. That's f of 1 and 1. Uh, 1 and 1. So those are the first two uh, Fibonacci numbers there. It's a little bit slow. And what we're going to do is append. Uh, the reason it's slow is actually because of the recording software and so on that I have going. So and f equals uh, uh, f. And then we append in the sum of the two previous uh, numbers. f uh, in, in the for loop. So f uh, and... 1 and 1 plus together. So just put in 1 plus 1. There we go. And see what that looks there. That's the approach we'll take there. And this case will be 1 plus 2. So that would be a different for loop using where we sort of append new values to an existing array rather than replacing values. So again, that's a different approach there we, we could take. Where is my. There we go. All right, that's the end of the presentation. It's the wrong Julia page. All right.